We are live! Welcome, 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 lovely, lovely, lovely ladies to Fem Power. So, I need to come over here really quick on my computer where we will be reading comments until they begin working and I will be um, invoking the law of assumption because it worked yesterday that they're going to work very, very quickly here. So I am sharing this into the FemPower group. Somebody has already shared it. Look at that. Amazing. Hi, Amy. Uh, no, I don't want to send it in Messenger. Thank you. We're going to share it into the FemPower group. Hi, Holly. <clears throat> because I told y'all, oh, and I just shared it to my own profile twice. Look at that. This is okay. This is what um, team will help with at some point when I have a team. More options, we're putting it in the group. There we go. We are actually live on Instagram and we are live on my personal profile on Facebook and I'm going to share it into the FemPower group because I told everyone that's where this would be. So let's just make sure it's there. But I wanted to put it on my personal profile so that if there's anybody that's not in the FemPower group, you are now invited to join us inside the FemPower group where the rest of this amazing masterclass is going to be held. I see Carrie is here. I see Holly's here. I see Alex is here. I saw that Amy was here. Freaking amazing. So cool. Okay. So like I said, I will be not checking comments on my computer. Look at that because they're working on my phone. Yay. Cool. So last time that I ran FemPower, I actually ran it. The first day was on my personal Facebook page. The second day was on my personal Instagram page. And then the third day we actually put into the FemPower group. Rebecca's watching live. Hello. And when I was looking at my notes and changing things, I was like, you know what? I think I liked that a lot and we're going to do it again that way this time. Amy says it is in both places on Facebook. Thank you so much, darling. I appreciate that very, very much. So it is also on Instagram, it's on Facebook, and it is in the Facebook group. Woohoo! I have been seeing y'all share the I'm in graphic. We will be drawing our first names tomorrow, so make sure you keep sharing it. Rebecca's name is in there like four times, I think, already. So keep sharing the I'm in graphic. It is in the Facebook group. And I did actually try to put everything into guides yesterday. And because the account that was deactivated created the guides, like you can still see the guides, or at least I can, there's nothing in the guides, but I also can't add anything to the guides. So. I need to figure out how to delete the guides and then add different guides so that I can put everything into there. But that should be done by this evening sometime so that the I'm in graphic is easily available in the guides section. So just know that up front. Um, and as long as you tag me, I can get you in the drawing. If you're not tagging me on Facebook, Sarah Fempower, Instagram, Sarah underscore Fempower. I love that you're sharing it. But I won't be able to, like, have an equal energetic exchange with you in putting your name in the cup if you don't tag me. So please tag me, okay? Okay. I'm so freaking excited for this course. Like, this was already on the docket for spring. It's not quite spring yet. It's close. But I already knew that it was going to run probably in March, maybe in April, but probably in March. And I also knew that I was excited to run it after going to the retreat that I went to a couple weeks ago because I knew that the depth of this course was going to be even more than it would have been when I ran it last summer. And that's already true. And then it just so happened, like this part wasn't planned, that I'm running it in the 24 hours of purring. In the 24 hours of this full moon that is the Purim celebration in the Jewish faith. How cool is that? Because in the post that I posted earlier today, we are looking at Esther in a lot of different ways inside of Fem Power. When you think of a woman today, what do you think of? Like, 
on the whole, what do you think of when you think of a woman today? Go ahead and drop it in the comments for me. Like, what does she wear? How does she speak to herself? What does she like to do? Who does she hang out with? Just start throwing some of that in the comments for me. Like, does she speak well to herself? An average woman of today. I don't want you to think of an icon. I don't want you to think of me. I don't want you to think of a highest version of yourself. Average woman today can be a Western woman, could not be a Western woman. Like, however you want to think of that. <laughs> Rebecca says, pants and self-loathing. Is she far off? I don't think so. And yet, is that what you would have seen in Esther? Holly says, working mom, having girls nights, spends lots of time with family, always too busy. Rebecca says, depressed. Amy doesn't really know. Usually she doesn't speak, um, they don't speak so well of, to themselves. They're okay. Worn out, frazzled. For freaking real? Overworked. Like, we live in the most connected time in history. Holy crap, I've got goosebumps. We live in the most connected time in history. The most te technologically advanced time in history? And the women of today are lonely? That's what Amy just said. Overworked? Frazzled? Self-loathing? Is that what you want for your daughters? Or your daughters-in-law? Or your nieces? Or your best friend's baby? Is that what the legacy that we are building for them? Amy says, definitely not. And so if you look at history, and I do personally think that Esther is a legitimate historic figure. But even if you don't, you can come up with someone similar that you can look back in, in history at. If you want to do Cleopatra, go ahead, do Cleopatra. If you want to do, you know, a, a Queen of England, go ahead, do a Queen of England. Like, somebody who you can look back to and be like, what did she embody? Who was she? Basically, I'm looking for you to have a dead female icon as we go through this course. Personally, I'm going to be talking a lot about Esther as we go through this course because it happens to be the week of Purim. That's just who I'm going to talk about. But if it works better for you to insert Cleopatra when I say Esther, by all means. If it works better for you to insert Queen Victoria, by all means. Like, whatever is going to work for you, please roll with that so that you don't get hung up on, Ugh, Sarah's talking about another biblical person. Don't worry about that. Like, just roll with whoever works for you. Holly says, we need to set the new standard. Ooh, yes, girl. Hi, Rhoda. I'm so glad you're here. So... When you think of Esther, what did she embody? Did she love herself? Was she so mad that she was in whatever place it was that she was in when she was taken? Like, oh, if I'd only not been there, maybe I wouldn't be stuck in this palace. Do you feel like that was her reaction? Do you feel like maybe she had a little piece of that at the beginning? Like, oh my gosh, what? How could this have happened? And maybe she let the feelings move through her. Maybe she cried, maybe she screamed, maybe she beat up the nicest pillows in the kingdom. And then it was, okay, this is the situation. How do I make the best of it? How do I make the best of it? 
and then she did. This is the situation. How is it going to work in my favor? And then she did. This is the circumstance. Can I trust that this circumstance is working in my favor? And if that's the case, what are my next steps? What are my next moves? That's what I think of Esther. I don't think she railed and was mad and grumpy for, you know, a year plus in a harem before she even had access to the king. I don't think that there's any way she could have become Haggai's favorite if that had been her. Some bitter, self-loathing, stressed, nah, wish I wasn't here. I wish they'd act different. Don't they understand we're captives? Don't they understand he just wants us for sex? I don't want to be here. Oh, I wish they'd just quit bugging me with this beauty treatment and that beauty treatment and this thing and that thing. Why can't they just leave me alone? I don't think much, if any, of that was present. I think if she wanted a day off, she probably could have had a day off. But it was probably asked for well. Would it be okay if I just rested tomorrow? Thank you. Would it be okay if? She probably got it for the most part. And so the woman of today is so out of touch with her inner Esther that she has become everything that we just listed in the comments. Lonely, stressed, overworked. Feeling like she has to do everything herself and she doesn't have the time and the space to do it. so disconnected from the power that is actually within her that she's making herself physically sick and she doesn't even know it. So disconnected from the femme power within her that she's making herself emotionally and physically sick and she's passing it through her DNA. And she doesn't even know it. What do you think she'd do if she did know it? What would the woman of today do if she knew that her self-loathing, her overworkedness, her tiredness, her stress was making her sick and her generations after her sick. What do you think she'd change? Amy says change things. What do you think she would change? You talk to the average woman of today and say, you know, it would probably help your body a lot if you ate healthier. And she's like, I don't have time. I just have to run through the drive through I don't have time. So often today, Rhoda says love herself. So often today, we have to have a health crisis to change things. And that's so sad to me. We have to find ourselves in an ER bed. We have to find ourselves hooked up to tubes. We have to find ourselves surviving on the other side of open heart surgery or on the other side of a cancer battle, or in the midst of a cancer battle, in order to freaking wake up and be like, oh, maybe I should change something. What? I don't know, but 
baby something. Amy says she needs to take time out for herself to decompress. Holly says, so true and so sad. If you're a woman in my world, I hope that is never your reality because I'm so freaking loud with this message. Holly says, I had to end up in ER after passing out to see that I was so stressed. Yeah. That is the reality of a 21st century Western woman. Why? And so when I share about cycle syncing, I'm not trying to box you in. I am not trying to give you a set of rules to follow, like another diet program, like another workout routine, like another fill in the blank. That is not my goal when I teach cycle syncing. My desire is for you to actually find your inner Esther. Tap into her. Treat you as she would have. Do I think the women of antiquity cycle sync? Yes, I a thousand percent think the women of antiquity cycle synced. I really, really do. I feel like there is so much more honor when you study antiquity and women for a female cycle than there is today that it was impossible for them to not cycle sync. Somebody asked me Saturday, I think it was, um, in a Marco Polo thread. It was, what's your favorite form of self-care? And it sounds so cliche and it sounds so tongue in cheek and it sounds like I'm just trying to sell my brand when I said cycle syncing. Like there's a lot of things that I do for self-care on a daily basis. I drink this stuff almost on a daily basis. I drink my vitamins on a daily basis. I shower, like seriously, it's not that hard, on a daily basis. I do beauty rituals, beauty regimens that legitimately raise my frequency. And if that's a totally foreign concept to you, I invite you to Energetic Escort that's starting next week. It's currently $999. Moving on. Okay. So I do all of these things on a daily or a weekly basis to love myself, to invest in myself, to enrich myself. Rebecca, I don't shower daily. I shower. I don't shower daily. I don't actually think that's good for your skin. I actually think it's self-care to not shower daily. You know, hate me, love me, whatever. <laughs> and so, like, there's so many things that I do on a daily basis, whether it's moving my body, whether it's taking an Epsom salt bath, whether it is creating a space that I can breathe in. Make sure you smell nice. Yes, Amy. Make sure you smell good to you and your spouse if you have one. And the person behind you at the grocery store. And so, like, everything that I do has a note of self-care in it. Like, I have a nanny because there is an element of self-care in it, ultimately, at the end of the day. So, in answer to that question that was asked of me on Saturday, there were several and I do mean several answers that I could have given. She asked for the top three things that we do that we consider self-care for our bodies. Why they made perfume before they invented soap. Oh my gosh, Rebecca, yes. That's awesome. And so I answered and I did say cycle syncing. I'm like, honestly, it's cycle syncing because if I'm not nourishing my body for what my hormones need to do, and I'm just like, yep, I'm going to have a green smoothie every single day for my entire life because I'm supposed to eat green things and they're good for my body and I need all of the chlorophyll and I need all of the chlorella and I need all of the vitamin K and I need all of the everything else that spinach has in it and that spirulina has in it because my body needs those things. And our planet is, you know, predominantly 
nutrient deficient so our food is not as nourishing as it once was and so I have to take these supplements and I have to do these extra things so that my body's getting everything that it needs and I do the exact same thing day after day after day after day there is a point in my cycle where it's very very beneficial to my body and there's a point in my cycle where it's actually a detriment to my body And so, when you begin to understand how your hormones work, and you begin to work within that paradigm, when you begin to work within that structure, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, that your body has actually been encoded with, that the DNA strands wrote, you come into alignment with your body in a brand new way, a way that I do believe Esther was in. And then your body can begin to function in the way that it was meant to function. When you have a cold, raw, green smoothie, when you're in your luteal or menstrual phase, your body actually has to work harder to digest it. Your body has to rev more to digest it. It requires more of your system to digest it. Why would I do that if I understand that? There's equally nourishing foods that I can give myself in my luteal and menstrual phases that my body is going to actually benefit from and be able to use in the most appropriate, beautiful way. And I can get back to my green stuff when my body, when my metabolism is actually capable of handling a bunch of raw stuff. There you go, Amy. So then do something hot. Rebecca says, I finally had a baby after doing a lot more smoothies. That's freaking amazing, babe. And there's other cycles to work within, too. There's healing that, yes, has to happen. But I feel like the ultimate structure that we have been gifted is our cycle, and then everything can stem from that. I had a client last week. <sighs> amazing client. I love this woman. And she's a one-on-one -on -one client and she came to me and she's like, Sarah, I just taught this free. I think it was free. May not have been free. It might've been a micro course, but I just taught this course and the people that signed up for it, I feel like already knew the things that I was going to teach. I feel like I'm not sharing anything new with anybody at all. Like I went to actually teach it and based on the people that were in it, it was like, you already know all of this. I was like, baby, you've got to get out of your head because you're trying to think ahead of your client. You want to be intellectually ahead of your client. And that's not how this works. They may already know it in their head, but you know it in your heart and you know it in your womb. That is very, very different than all the head knowledge. I lived in head knowledge for freaking years. Yes, I know the capital of that. Yes, I know the capital of that. Yes, I know which river runs north. Yes, yes, yes. I know all of these things. Congratulations. Here's your valedictorian paperwork. Have a nice life. That's it. That's it. Seriously? Have PTSD from high school so I can go have a nice life? Seriously? Which is why I went to trade school. I was like, I can't do another five or four or five years of what I just did. It was not feasible for my body. And so having all of the head knowledge, like it's great, but you're going to find yourself in this like race with your potential clients, with your clients, just like my client did last week. Where she's like, I have to know more, I have to know more, I have to know more. I'm like, you don't have to know in your brain more. You have to embody it here. You have to embody it here. And when you do that, it comes out in an entirely different way. There is a richness and a depth to what you say that is completely different than if you just know it here. I built my business to six figures here. 
this year is going to be incredibly different. It's going to be here, yeah, but it's going to be here and it's going to be in my womb and it's going to emanate up and radiate out. So the cycle that we have is actually a masculine structure. So I know a lot of you have heard me talk about masculine and feminine, but maybe some of you have not. And so what I want you to understand is that creator is masculine, creator is feminine. There's both halves to make a whole. And we are made in that image. This is my opinion. <clears throat> no matter who you think creator is, no matter what you think creator is, the entity that life sprang forth from has a masculine element and has a feminine element. Now, Overarchingly, you can see when you start to understand this, that masculine is very structured, very finite, um, very linear, very how and let's go do. Let's figure it out here. Let's go execute also here. And so how I like to describe this is that we have a masculine structure, a masculine house. So it has a foundation, it has walls, it has a roof, it has windows that you can see out of, it has doors to keep a safe space. The masculine is very big on safety. And that's also their biggest fear. If there's something that's threatening, how can they make it safe again? And that's what will put a masculine into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn into a trauma response is a lack of safety instantaneously. And so the masculine is constantly trying to create safe spaces for the feminine to flow within. And so if you think of this house example that I have for you, the feminine or the family or the person who lives in this house or apartment then gets to flow out and flow in, have a meal, enjoy a bath, read a book, write a book. Like the creativity then gets to flow within this structure, gets to decorate, gets to paint the walls, gets to change the flooring or the bedding whenever they feel like it inside of this safe structure. Encoded in your DNA as a woman is a masculine structure. It is known commonly today as the menstrual cycle. It's 28 days long, not just however long you bleed for it. It's a full 28 days long ish. If you have a 35 day cycle, it's totally fine. If you have a 50 day cycle, you need to, you know, see somebody to start trying to bring that into more alignment, but cycle syncing can still help. When you start eating by cycle phase, your body actually will start to heal itself. I've watched it happen. It's freaking incredible. You start working out by cycle phase, your body will start to heal itself. It is so cool. But for centuries, we have removed ourselves from this masculine structure. And especially in the last century, declared that we can do anything a man can do while we're bleeding proved our point and now women are 50 to 60 percent more sick than men and we don't know why we're going to look at proving ver um we're going to look at power versus force I'm not sure if it's tomorrow or if it's Friday, but we're going to look at power versus force. So make sure you catch that module. Yes, Rebecca said creator made us after him slash herself. Yeah. Amy says hers is 26 to 27 days. That's totally okay. That's a, yeah, that's totally okay. And so when you begin to see this structure that you have as a gift, something to actually keep you safe, that's what the masculine is there to do. And then you learn how to flow your feminine within it. Your body has the space it needs to heal. You think of this masculine structure as a safe place to sabbat, to rest, to regenerate, to rebuild. 
When you're constantly kicking out the wall of your house, is it safe? When you're throwing things at the windows and they're always broken, is it safe? When you're overriding your system going, oh, I'll catch a second wind, it'll be fine. Is your feminine safe? Is your masculine safe? Is your body safe? Are your emotions safe? When you're like, you know what, I know I'm tired, I know I need a nap, I know I need to go to bed early tonight, but also I have to do this, 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 and this first, and all of a sudden it's 12 p.m. and you're like, guess I didn't go to bed early. You literally just, like, took a wrecking ball and put it through the west wall of your house. And then you freeze all night long. Or maybe you swelter all night long, depending on where you live. Is that how you want to live your life? Does that lead to the overworked, overstressed, self-loathing, lonely woman that we looked at at the beginning of this? Is that how Esther would have lived her life? Is that how you want your daughters, granddaughters, nieces, great, 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 granddaughters and great nieces to live their lives or daughters-in-law. Personally, no, that's not what I want at all. Right now I'm seeing in my five-year-old some things that are very much generational that we get to heal, that we get to break off. It ends here. But it starts with being self-aware enough, gathering the tools or at least the people with the tools that can heal so that she can go forth into a life that's very, very different than the lineage that she's received so far. Rebecca says, I've been going to bed earlier and after a week of eight to nine hours of sleep, I am naturally waking up around at around seven-ish hours. It's freaking amazing. Your body will tell you what it needs, but society will tell you, eh, hit the override button. It'll be okay. Oh, you have PCOS? Hit the override button. It'll be okay. Oh, you have chronic migraines? <laughs> hit the override button. It'll be okay. <laughs> Heart disease, number one killer of women. Hit the override button. It'll be okay. We have Western medicine. We'll just do open heart surgery. Okay. That sounds like a trip to Hawaii. Let's do that. No. That's not how we were ever intended to live. And so when people ask me what is cycle syncing and I'm supposed to give a 30 or 60 second answer, I'm like, you have four phases of your cycle. And if you start to learn the, it, the strengths of each phase of your cycle, then your life gets easier. I can't tell you in 30 to 60 seconds the impact that cycle syncing will have on your life. It is literally the ultimate form of self-care. And within that flows all of my self-care practices. So there are, like I just said, there are four phases to your menstrual cycle. Whether it's 28 days or whether it's 50 days, there are four phases to your menstrual cycle. Just like the moon has four phases. Yeah, we won't get dicey on that. And so <clears throat> the obvious one that you can see really easily is your menstrual phase, the bleeding phase of your cycle. And bleeding or not, you do still have a cycle. Womb, like uterus or not, you still have an energetic cycle. And I say that with absolute conviction because I've worked with breastfeeding women. I've worked with pregnant women. I have worked with menopausal women, pre, post, middle everything. And I've worked with women who have had hysterectomies and partial hysterectomies. One of them that has had a partial hysterectomy has been in my world nonstop for two years. And it says, she says it's changed her life. 
a different woman who is post menopause has been in my world for a year. It's changed her life. Like just because you don't bleed any longer does not mean you do not have an energetic cycle that happens every 28 ish days. We just get to find it. And then you get to learn about it the same as a woman who does have a menstrual phase, a bleeding phase. Amy says she's been making ahead food so she can eat better. That's beautiful. So obviously the, the obvious one is the menstrual phase of your cycle, the bleeding phase of your cycle. The next one is the follicular phase of your cycle. And I'm going to liken the follicular phase to spring. So your body is actually physically getting ready. It's preparing the follicle to release an egg. It's not ready yet. But the hormones circulating in your system are pre preparing your body to release the egg in the follicle. So the follicular phase of your cycle. This is, like I said, the same as spring. Think agriculturally. We plant in the spring. There's so new seeds in the spring. This is a great time for you chemically DNA wise in your system to meet new people, to begin new projects, to start something new. You actually have like, this is when, if you're um, in the online space or if you're a writer or if you're an artist of any kind, this is when a thousand new ideas are just like pouring from you or the copy just will not stop coming. It's like, oh my gosh, I gotta write that down. I gotta write that down. I can't write fast enough because so much creativity is just like whoosh, through my system right now. This is the follicular phase of your cycle. And then we move into the ovulatory phase of your cycle where that egg is actually released from the follicle. It's been prepped and now it's released from the follicle. And it's, Zipping down the fallopian tube going, hmm, I wonder if anybody's going to come see me for a date tonight. Yoo-hoo! Sperm! Do you want to come play? Every cell of your body is doing this exact same thing. Your face is more symmetrical when you ovulate. Your jawline is more defined when you ovulate. The chemistry that is happening in your womb is actually legitimately shouting for a mate. Like, Rebecca's laughing at my, my, my egg going down the fallopian tube going, yeah! Legitimately, though, the chemistry that is happening and emanating from your womb space is calling in a mate. And your brain is like, it has to be my husband or it has to be whoever I'm in a relationship with. But your body, your chemistry is like, Pfft. don't care. Is there an eggplant involved? It's physiologically ready to procreate one way or the other. And so this can translate into whatever it is that you have to do in your life. Like, <laughs> thank you, Amy's laughing. So I am here hanging out with y'all in the tail end of my follicular phase and the beginning stages of my ovulatory phase because I'm more attractive. Male or female, doesn't matter. I'm more attractive right now. I call people in at the best possible point now. Yes, Rebecca. <laughs> And so if you look agriculturally again, you have well-established plants by summer. You're tending them. You don't really have fruit to harvest yet, but you're tending them because they're well-established. They're not little baby seedling stage that can get squashed really quickly. You have plants to tend. And then we move into the luteal phase of your cycle, which is actually the longest phase of your cycle. And typically it breaks into two halves. We're just going to talk about it on the whole right now, though. So you move into the luteal phase of your cycle, which is like fall. What do we do in the fall? We harvest. We go pick all of that fruit that we planted in the spring, that we tended in the summer, and now it's ready to pick. 
or in the case of <clears throat> a 28 day cycle wherein sperm met egg, it's like, oh, I'm hunkering down for the next nine months. I'm getting cozy in my spot in the uterus. And so it, it's every cycle is mirrored in another cycle. Like you cannot get away from this once you see it. You see it in the four seasons, you see it in the lunar phases, you see it in pregnancy and the fourth trimester, you see it in life. You see it in life. I just did a reel about this. If you wanted to know more, it's in the reel from yesterday. I think it's or the day before. Anyway, I'm in a black shirt. And then we move into winter. What do we do in winter? Well, we rest from all of that hard work that harvesting was. From all of the hard work that tending and harvesting was. From all of the hard work that planting and tending and harvesting was. And we plan for the next year, if we're looking at this agriculturally. What worked well? What crops need to move if we're doing crop rotation? What worked well in the last 28 days of my cycle? Did that program take off? Did that copy work? Do I need to shift how I write my copy? Did that thing sell? Did the seeds that I planted at that mixer in my follicular phase, do I need to follow up with any of them? Typically that needs to happen in the fall though, not once you're in winter. Like everything that you need to do can be housed in the masculine structure of your menstrual cycle. If you'll let it. But society has trained us to hit that override button. Eh, tired, no big deal. I'll catch a second wind. It'll be fine. wall of your house is gone. And after 10 years of consistently doing that, you're sick and you don't know why. So I don't just teach rest on your period. I think some people think that, and that's not what I teach. I still work on my period. I work differently on my period, but I still work on my period. And then when the strengths of planting come in my follicular phase, you better bet your bottom dollar that I'm planting all over the place. I'm sowing seeds in groups. I'm sowing seeds in reels. I'm sowing seeds in TikToks. I'm sowing seeds in lives. I'm inviting people to the masterclass that I'm about to teach when I'm ovulating. I'm delivering the things that I sold when I'm luteal. I'm meeting with my clients the whole time. They've already said yes. I'm meeting with them the whole time. I was full bleeding last Monday and last Tuesday and I had the most private client calls that I've had in the last two weeks. Monday and Tuesday last week while I was bleeding. They still got what they paid for. A thousand percent they still got what they paid for. I just did it differently than I would if I wasn't bleeding. I had no makeup. I had not done my hair and I was off camera resting in my million dollar bed. But my brain is still fully functional. I can still deliver everything that they paid me to deliver to them as a private client. I still work. I just work differently. And something that I have noticed, and this has had to have happened I don't know this was just inevitable, I guess is how I'll put this, is that when I first started cycle thinking, this was in 2017. Hi, by the way, my name is Sarah. How far are we into this? And I haven't introduced myself yet, almost an hour. Okay, so I'm Sarah Jordan. And how I first started cycle thinking, like I learned tons about my body when I, I was like 21-ish years old and I wanted to come off of birth control. And so I learned how my body worked for the first time in my life. School didn't teach me that. I learned how my body worked. And then I was running a network marketing business starting in 2014 and I kept getting burned out. I kept getting excited for something. And then when I was supposed to show up for the thing that I was excited for, it was like somebody had just like taken a syringe and drained all the excitement and all of the 
anticipation out of me about this event. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited about that. Two weeks ago, what happened? And so in 2017, I actually took a course with a woman who was very high in my company. She was a, I don't know, like $30,000 a month earner. And she said that she had grown to that point as an introvert. And I was like, maybe that's my problem. Maybe I'm an introvert. Like high school, I wouldn't have said that I was really an introvert, but I do have PTSD from high school. So maybe I was, maybe that's why I burned out. And so I took this course and she said that she ran her business with her cycle. And I was like, huh? Tell me more. And also I was pregnant at that point. And so I did not, I was like, well, what do I do? I don't have a cycle. And so she told me exactly how to do it. Just like I will tell you exactly how to do it. If you're pregnant, breastfeeding, have had a hysterectomy, are close to or in menopause or beyond. She told me exactly how to do it. And it freaking worked. I was able to fall in love with that network marketing business again and run it really, really well in that pregnancy and beyond through cycle thinking. And so then in 2020, when I found myself in spaces with tons of female entrepreneurs that are freaking incredible humans, like women who were way beyond me, light years beyond me. And also they were like super excited, super on fire. Like I have a mentor who says that she's only excited about what she does 10% of the time. And that's probably average. Like that, that's legit. So when I say excited, I don't necessarily mean like, hey, I mean like they actually want to do the thing. They understand the compound effect. They understand that it's going to lead to the, what they desire in life. And I would watch them be super on fire, super focused. Yes, let's go. Let's make this happen. And then they'd be like, I want to quit. This isn't working. And I'm like, it was working fine two weeks ago. I know what's going on, but you don't. But you can't just say that in some of those spaces. And so I taught a course in February of 21 on how to think how to use your cycle for your business and it took off like fire people are like oh my gosh you just explained my whole life you just explained my frustration of my whole life a woman who'd been an entrepreneur for over 15 years she's like you have just given me the single biggest piece in single biggest missing piece of my career cycle thinking But instead, the narrative has us believing that we're fickle, that we're noncommittal, that we um, can't do what we say we're supposed to show up and do. Because they expect us to operate the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Well, if you would take what you want me to accomplish in a 30-day time frame and let me work it into my four phases, I will accomplish what you want me to accomplish in a 30-day time frame Plus, 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 if you let me do it my way. But when we had to break into a nine to five male patterned world, we had to conform to a nine to five male patterned world or they would have never let women in. That is why we have women that are 50 to 60% more sick. Now, am I thankful, beyond thankful for the women that did that? Yeah, I am. And now we can let it go. Like I said, we're looking at power versus force in an upcoming module in this free masterclass. And this is so where this applies. We proved that we can do it. And now we get to take our power, our femme power back and say, I've shown you I can do this your way. And now I'm going to do it my way, whether you like it or not. And you go do it. You want this much done in a 30 day time frame? Okay, great. I'm at this point in my cycle. I'm going to do this, 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 and this, in this order. And I promise you what you wanted done in 30 days will be done in 30 days. It may not look like you think it should look, but it will be done. What would that world look like? We have Esther's rise up all over the place who are so invested in their self care, who are so invested in honoring the masculine structure that is written on their very DNA so that they can flow within it. What will our world look like then? What will an average woman of today look like then? And I do mean for you to answer that question. 
because at the beginning of this, we painted a picture of what the average woman of today does look like. She's lonely, she's stressed, she's overworked, she's tired. She's self-loathing. If every woman understood the masculine structure that is in her DNA and used it and flowed within it and honored it and used it, like I can't even begin to tell you how much freer my life is because I use it for my benefit, what would that look like? What would she look like? Like, I don't want copies of me, but I do want women who are free. I do want women who are well. I do want women who are healthy. I do want women who love themselves. self-loathing that self-loathing self comment at the beginning of this was so on point and that makes me so sad it doesn't need to be that way amy says it would be freeing and amazing yeah so as we go through this course I feel like I've already told you what cycle syncing is, not directly. It is using that masculine structure of the four phases of your cycle, learning the strengths that are in each one, and then using them for whatever it is that you have to accomplish. And I can quickly apply it to running a business in the online space. Like, obviously, I've done that very well throughout the last two years. And I've also worked with women who are not in the online space, who are in a nine to five. And it's still very beneficial to the woman in a nine to five. It's still very beneficial to the woman who's at home full time. It's still very beneficial to the entrepreneur who's not in the online space. You hear studies in um, like Asia, you hear studies in Europe about productivity, even even like Google, I'm pretty sure, has done these studies with their employees. Like the 20 minute nap in the afternoon and they're more productive. Finland, I'm pretty sure, has done this too. Like, okay, you want three days off on the weekend? Okay, fine. You work for eight, and it may have been 10 hour days, but I'm pretty sure it was only eight hour days. Okay, fine. You work for eight hour days. You get the same amount done as you would in five eight hour days. Fine, you can have an extra day off. If you use that cycle, that structure, that house that your masculine has given you in the form of the 28-day cycle, you become more efficient. What employer, what client doesn't have mad respect for an employee or a, uh, what would it be called? coach is what's in my head, but we're not all coaches. For someone that they have hired to do a job, to be more efficient. To have peak production, they don't need to know that it's because you used your cycle. They just need to know that you're more efficient and had peak production. How freaking incredible would that be? Thanks, Amy. Contractor. So, this is what cycle thinking is. It is the epitome of self-care. And I have not touched my notes today. <laughs> we just ran with what came through. And so we might be doing what was in my notes tomorrow. We'll see. But I do want to end with something that was in my notes for tomorrow that I didn't print. So here we go. Off cuff again. So when you consider assets. What do you think of when the word asset comes up? This has been kind of a buzzword in my space in the last couple of weeks. So what comes to mind when you think of the word asset? Now, when I was first taught about assets, there were depreciable assets and there were appreciable assets. I don't really like to count the depreciable assets because it's like, yeah, I bought a car. And also as soon as I Throw it off the parking lot. It's not worth what I just paid for it. <laughs> we 
Lisa says, yay for off the cuff. Yes, it's only taken two years, dear. Um, Amy says something that makes me money. Yes, that's what I like to think of when I think of an asset. Something that makes me money. Holly says, semi-permanent investment. Okay, I like that. Semi-permanent, too permanent even, investment. A car, which technically classifies as a depreciable asset, is not a semi-permanent investment because it's not making you money, like what Amy said. And so I don't really like to consider a car unless it's like, you know, a classic that you're just going to go park in the garage and drive twice a year to a car show. Like, that's different. But my Toyota Sienna... It's a depreciable asset. Facts. A boat. Depreciable asset. RV. Depreciable asset. A house. Technically would be more in the asset category because it's appreciating if you're caring for it well. If you're improving on it. If you buy a house and just leave it sit, leave it sit there, it, it, that's not appreciating. It's just impossible. <laughs> yes, Dana's in the house. Hey, babe. An asset is increasing in value. Very good. And so the way that I see this is anything that will give me a return on investment, just like what Amy had already said, something that makes me money. And so I did a reel about this a couple of weeks ago of like, if you have an extra 5k, where do you invest it? I had a private client ask me this. Where do you put it? Do I put it in Facebook ads? Do I put it in signage for my shop? Do I put it in decor for my shop? She has a physical brick and mortar location. Or do I put it in coaching? And this is, it could easily be misconstrued as a biased opinion, but I could care less if she puts it in coaching with me or if she puts it in coaching with someone else. My answer was still coaching. Like if you don't have a sign, you need a sign on, on your building. But if you put it in Facebook ads, Facebook book could de deactivate your account tomorrow. <laughs> like, facts. It could happen. And then you're out that money. You put it in radio ads if you're a local business like what she is. Like, you spent $2,000 on ads and they'll run for three months and then it's done. Maybe the right people heard it. Maybe they didn't. But it's not return. It's not really a return on your investment when you put it in those places. Now, should there be a percentage of your business that if you have a brick and mortar that is spent on advertising? Yes, I believe that there definitely is a percentage that should be put there. But in her case, she's like, I have an extra 5K. Where do I put it? I was like, honestly, you put it in you. This stuff between your two ears, it doesn't matter what business you're in. It doesn't matter what job you're in. It doesn't matter what career path you choose. This stuff between your two ears is the biggest return on investment that you will ever have. Ever. Amy's car makes her money. That's different. Yes, Amy's business uses her car to make her money. But my Toyota Sienna sitting out in the parking lot? That, that, no, it doesn't. It drives us to karate, which is fantastic, but it doesn't make me money. So Amy has a different story with the car. Yes, thank you, Amy, for pointing that out. Um, Elaine says you are your biggest asset. So that was my next question, darling. So what is your biggest asset? Like, don't tell me your boat. Don't tell me your house. Don't even tell me your crypto or your gold and silver. Or your stock portfolio. Your biggest asset is you. And I'd like to tell you it's just the stuff between your ears. But if your womb is not healthy, if your heart is not healthy, if your gut is not healthy, if your legs don't work, like all of this contributes to our overall mental health. And so if you can start to see yourself as the biggest asset that you have, how will you treat your body? Will you continue to blow holes in the wall of your house on a regular basis? Will you continue to throw crap through the windows of your house on a regular basis? No. If you're your biggest asset, are you 
nourishing your body well? If you're your biggest asset, are you investing in yourself in nourishing foods? Just a second. Instagram apparently only lets me go live for an hour. <laughs> I'll finish that in a minute. If you're your biggest asset, are you working out at the wrong phase of your cycle and shooting something through your roof so that the next time it storms, you have a big leaky roof? Or are you going to work out for the cycle phase that it's appropriate to work out for? If you're running a business and you're like, oh my gosh, I just have to get this done. This deliverable was due, you know, a week ago and I meant to get it done in my luteal phase, but it doesn't matter if I'm bleeding or not. This has to happen right now. That's poor planning. And now you have again put a dent. You become a detriment to the asset that you are by forcing yourself to do something that's out of alignment with the structure the masculine house that you're meant to flow within. Is that how you treat your biggest asset? I'm pretty sure that this is how Esther saw herself. After the initial grief, and it would have been grief, of being ripped away from the only family she had, placed in a Gentile's palace, offered foods that she, according to her faith, would not eat picking her way around those foods to find the ones that she could eat. After the initial grief of that, I'm pretty sure she would have started treating herself like the asset that she already knew she was. She would have seen the beauty rituals not as somebody bugging her, but as somebody investing in her, the asset. You don't bathe in myrrh and not have a very high opinion of yourself, not have a very high level of self-worth on the table, of self-love. And so if you can see yourself as the single biggest asset in your life, will you bathe in myrrh? Will you start to use the masculine structure of your cycle that's already encoded on your DNA and flow within it so that every single thing that you do is actually done in self-love, done in self-honor, done in self-respect, done in self-care? If the number one form of self-care is cycle syncing and you're just freaking ignoring it, you're like, yeah! my self-care is eating well and taking my vitamins and taking a bath and sometimes it's chocolate cake I saw that today too you're still blowing walls and or holes in the walls of your house you're still knocking out pieces of your foundation you're still allowing the water to come pouring through a hole in the roof you are not allowing that asset to be a return on investment to you you're not allowing that asset to make you money. If you're sick because your form of self-care is a random bath here and there and a green smoothie every day, like it sounds good, but a green smoothie every day is not okay for your system. And chocolate cake? I'm sorry, that's never self-care. That's eating emotions. If that's what you do for self-care and then suddenly you find yourself in the hospital with a cancer diagnosis, was that investing in your single biggest asset? Like, oh, but I do self-care. How could I possibly have cancer? I do self-care. Really? Think you maybe should reassess how you do self-care? And the thing is, is that there's, um... There's different pieces of self-care. There's the physical things that you do, like vitamins, like what you eat, like how you work out. Those are physical pieces of self-care. And then there's emotional pieces of self-care also. There's emotional pieces of self-care in the form of, is that a passenger that's popping up screaming for love right now? 
you just shove her aside and be like, no, this is the way that we're going right now. I'll talk to you later. Maybe you could sit down and shut up. That'd be nice. You just blew another hole in the side of your house. But the thing about the structure of your cycle, of your menstrual cycle or your energetic cycle, depending on whether you bleed or not, is that your body actually gives you space for emotional self-care. It doesn't have to be a random Monday there where it happens. It gives you space for emotional self-care at a very specific point in your cycle. So yes, nourishing your body is good. Yes, moving your body is good. Yes, planning your business with the strengths of each phase of your cycle is good. All of these things are pouring into the asset, giving you a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger return on investment. And also... The emotional pieces, the sisterhood wounds, the motherhood wounds, the daddy wounds, the little girl inside of you that is screaming for attention, she has a space inside the masculine house structure of your cycle to get the love that she needs. And that's usually when she throws a temper tantrum and you're just like, Papa might all, I'm good. That's not investing in your single biggest asset. It's not creating a return on investment for you. This is why I'm so passionate about what I do. It's not just rest on your period. It's never been just rest on your period. Yes, my work has deepened over the last two years, but it has never been just rest on your period. And the thing is, is that I was not well when I learned about cycle syncing. I had healed from depression. I had healed from suicidal depression. I had healed from suicidal, I'm sorry, from postpartum anxiety. I had healed from a lot of grief from losing two babies by the time I learned about cycle syncing in 2017. So my body was already on a healing trajectory, which was amazing. It was freaking phenomenal. It was the perfect time for me to learn cycle syncing. And at that time, I had enough generational pieces. Like, I have a mother who's had a hysterectomy for fibroid tumors, a grandma, an aunt who've all had hysterectomies for fibroid tumors, and a great-grandma who had female issues. I had a long lineage, excuse me, of female pain. I had a long lineage of females destroying the house that they had, living too much in their masculine, pushing too hard, hitting the override button too much. I had a long lineage of that. And so when I started cycle syncing, yeah, I needed like five days while I was bleeding to rest. And my body was forced stopping me by 2018. I had a bleed that would lay me in the fetal position for 30 hours of my bleed. Not everybody's like that. I get that. I needed five days of rest because I had a lineage of women who didn't. Listen to your energy. I no longer need five days of rest. In July last year, I needed five still. Now, I need about three. And then my follicular energy takes over and I can go. But I honor those three days like they're sacred. And so depending on how much generational crap you have to heal around your masculine structure of your cycle determines how long I may suggest that you rest for for the next six months and then we can reassess and see how you feel. I needed five. Now I only need three. I may get to a point where I only need one. But I had to give myself that in the last two years so that my body could heal. And I will be very conscientious and I will be very in tune and in touch with my body to make sure that I don't override it too far. And if I get, I will never get there. Like I will not get there again. I will be in tune enough that I'll be like, no, you know what? I think I actually need three or four days this time instead of two. And that's okay. And I want everybody to know that it's okay. But if you need three, if you need five, take the three or the five. You have no idea how much crap you're healing just by resting on your period just by planting the seeds in your follicular phase, just by tending them in ovulation, just by harvesting in luteal, just by resting at menstruation. This is your femme power come to life. Tahani's here! 
Hey, babe. This is your femme power in action. And that is our training for today. I am going to tell you a couple of different ways that you can step a little bit deeper into my world if you wanted to. Uh, so that, you know, you can learn a little bit more if all of this is new or maybe it's not new, but you're like, okay, I'm ready, Sarah. Like I've heard you say this a thousand times and suddenly the asset makes sense. Suddenly the ROI makes sense. Then I invite you to stay and listen to a couple of options that you have. And if you would like to go, you feel complete. You are absolutely free to go. Thank you for being here. So in April, I, I guess I did mention that energetic escort is starting next week. I just mentioned it briefly at about the 20 minute mark because the energetic scale is crucial to your healing. It's crucial to your self care and it actually plays a huge role in that masculine structure of your cycle. Big, big, big ways. And so we're actually opening energetic escort next week. It's currently $999. If you wanted to jump in, it is going up to 2,222. So if you're thinking about it, make sure you jump in now. And then power play, we looked at circumstances at the beginning of this. We looked at Esther's circumstances at the beginning of this. She literally was taken by guards out of her home and put into a Gentile's palace. Someone who didn't understand her ways, didn't understand her faith, didn't understand how she ate. Didn't understand any of that. I was like, well, here's you a plate of pork. Enjoy. And she's like, got any veggies in the house? She could have been bitter. She could have been so broken in so much pain and so much grief. Yes, for her family, but for the loss of her faith, for the loss of anyone who believed in the same things that she believed in. She probably, she probably didn't even have scrolls to read that had the Torah in it anymore. It had to be in her. She had to have a line direct to creator if she wanted to study. She could have grieved. She could have wept. She could have moped. She could have become so depressed that she was sick. She could have died because of depression. But that's not who Esther was. No. She probably had her moment of like, holy crap, this sucks. She probably did cry briefly. Briefly being a couple of days, maybe a week. And then it was like, okay, this is the circumstance. I get to choose who I am in the circumstance. Your accounts are gone, Sarah. Okay, great. That's the circumstance. I get to choose who I am in the circumstance. That is what we're unpacking inside of power play. And I mentioned this yesterday in Vortex Module 4, which is also free inside of the group FemPower. Um... If you feel like you're ahead of your spouse in any vortex, in any learning, anything, in growth, in healing, in faith, then I invite you to power play also because we're looking at what that looks like when you're on the leading edge in your actual house, in your relationship. What does that look like? How do the circumstances versus the personal power play into that dynamic when you're in a relationship with someone who feels like they're light years behind you. We're looking at both of those pieces inside of power play. It is $222. So it's going to be a micro course. It will probably be 90 minutes. I'm hopeful it's not more than that, but if it goes more than that, Hey, it was only 222. So that's amazing. So if you would like the link to either of those, you just have to message me and say, Sarah, I want power play or Sarah, I want energetic escort. And I would be happy to get them for you. As far as cycle syncing goes, my next cycle syncing specific course is coming in April and it is called Time Flow. I cannot tell you how many times I have tried somebody else's method for time management. I've tried this time management system and I've tried that time management system and they don't freaking work because they're not taking into account my house, my masculine structure so that my feminine can flow within that time management system. And so inside a time flow, we are looking at how to use your masculine structure, your cycle 
on a calendar, on a scheduling system, in a time management fashion so that you can flow within it and be in the most self-care possible, be as honoring to yourself as possible, be as loving to yourself as possible, and still, like I said, accomplish as much if not more in a 30-day time frame as your peers. Does that sound like fun? I think it does. I think that sounds like so much fun. And if you were in it last year, it was a lot of head. We're dropping into heart. We're dropping into womb. It will be so much more in depth this year. It's currently only $555. It, just like Energetic Escort, will end up at 2222. So by all means, grab it while it's only 555. And if you do want a payment plan, I do have a two pay option for you for time flow. So when you message me for the link, just say, hey, Sarah, I would like the two pay option for time flow or just Sarah, I want the link for time flow. Either way, just let me know which version of the link you would like and I would be happy to get it for you. Alex says, well, F, I'm many light years ahead in my home. Your comment didn't finish. That's okay. We got you, babe. So that's coming in April. And then in June, maybe a little before, I'm not sure yet, is Food in Flow. So Food in Flow is like the most beautiful next step that you could take after finally understanding that you're the asset, you're the biggest ROI, and the masculine structure that was written on your DNA by the creator of the universe is your cycle. You're going to get to learn how to eat and nourish this asset within that masculine structure. How to flow when it comes to nourishment, when it comes to food, when it comes to vitamins in that structure inside of food and flow. So it also is only 555 right now. It will also go to 2222 at some point. So you can catch it at pre-sale right now at 555. It has a four pay option if that's something that you would like to just like start the payment plan on. Like I said, we're starting for sure in June, it might be a little bit earlier. We'll see. But that is food and flow. It's so amazing. I love food and flow. I ran it for the first time in 21 and it's actually one of the programs that I cannot find after losing my accounts. And so I was like, yes, it was on the docket anyway, let's do it. So I'm excited about that. And then I want to talk to you about 75 Fem. I talk about nourishing your body by cycle phase. I talk about movement by cycle phase. There's a very popular 75 day program out there that is very masculine in how it works. It's X amount of water a day. It's this, you have to pick a diet program and stick to it. It's this many workouts for this amount of time every single day. It's very masculine in how it's created and it's very amazingly well created for a male body. If you box yourself into that 75 day program as a woman that has four distinct phases of her cycle and you are not honoring each of those phases as you go through that program, you are doing your asset a detriment. And you may not notice it this year. You may be like, ah, that program changed my life. And in 10 years, when you're battling menopause and hating life, and wondering what the heck happened, you'll never track it back to that 75 day program where you overrode every single female system that you had. But that could have been it. And so I took the basic premise of that 75 day program and then I inserted an eating plan that I feel like actually works for the female body very, very well. I inserted workouts that actually work for the female body by cycle phase very, very well. And you have a lot of freedom to flow within the structure of 75 Fem. Like you can pick whatever eating program you want. If you're gluten free, if you're dairy free, like all of those things can stay in place. I just give you the food list to eat within. I give you the um, workouts that would be appropriate for each phase of your cycle. And then we meet once a week. We have a group call once a week where you can be like, okay, I did this, this, and this. I think I'm at this point in my cycle moving to this point. What would you recommend? Or, oh my gosh, this was my win. And then we get to celebrate in sisterhood on those group calls. And I freaking love it. So 
we do things like measurements, we do things like weighing, but it's not daily. It's phase by phase by phase. Because if you're going to take measurements and you're going to take them from when you're bleeding and then you're going to take them from when you're ovulating and you're going to pick, compare the two of them, you're going to be like, oh, holy crap, Sarah had me lose 15 inches in a week. Two weeks. And I'll be like, no. These numbers have to be compared to your next bleed numbers. Your ovulation numbers have to be compared to your next ovulation numbers. We cannot compare apples to oranges when it comes to stats. And I don't know another program that does that. That's, yeah, anyway. So 75 Fem is $3,333. It is a 11 week program. Like I said, you do get a group call per week. You get a workbook. You get all of the structure of what to eat and how to work out. Inside of that, you get it up front and you can learn it like we learn it together. We implement it together as we go throughout those 11 weeks. So it is, like I said, 33, 33. There are payment plans for that as well. So ask me about the payment plans for 75 Fem. Like absolutely ask me about the payment plans for 75 Fem. And then there is residence. I love residence. So residence is every single program that I have ran that I still have after my accounts were deactivated, which is like 20 plus programs. So no worries there. Um, and then you also get everything live for a year. So you're instantly in food and flow. You're instantly in time flow. You're instantly in energetic escort. You're instantly in the sacred critic this fall. You're in everything for an entire year plus everything that's already in the vault. And there is one day per month where all of the ladies in residence have access to me in a Marco Polo group and you can ask questions. So you can have gone through food and flow and then come into that group on the day that we have our VIP day and be like, Sarah, I have a question about this, 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 and this. Where does this food fit? I ate this. How should I have cooked this? I did it this way. Like you can ask all the questions that you want to and then I will get to them throughout the course of that day. And it's a it's a beautiful piece of a mastermind that happens once a month where you have access to me inside resonance. Some people are like, that's great. I'm sorry. That is 888 per month. It is going up. It is going up probably the end of next week. It is going up. Okay. So if you've been thinking about it, please jump in now. Um, or it's 10K paid in full if you want. If you're like, that's great, but I need a little bit higher touch, that's totally okay. I have added the Resonance VIP option where you get everything I just said, plus you get one one-on-one -on -one phone call with, or phone call, Zoom call with me per month. So 60 minutes with me, just the two of us per month in addition to all of that. So if you want to like get down and dirty with your brand, if you want to strategize by cycle phase for, you know, content, if you want to figure out how to take a brick and mortar business and get some online traction with it, like we can strategize all those pieces. If you want to talk about sex and orgasms in a private space with just me? I got you, babe. So that is $1,222 per month or paid in full. It is $14,444. It is a 12 month commitment. Okay. So all 12 months. And then if you're like, that's great but I just kind of want you, Sarah. You can totally have just me. I do have private coaching packages. I have a three month package, a six month package, and a 12 month package. The 12 month paid in full is 33,333. And then obviously there's payment plans per month for that. If you wanted to, it's 3333 per month for that one. And then the six month would be, you know, about half. The three month would be about a quarter of that. So if any of those sound amazing to you, just reach out in Messenger and we'll probably set up a discovery call to see if you and I are a good fit. And then we can proceed with any of those private coaching packages that you would like to also. So I will see you all back here tomorrow again at 3.30 Eastern. This time it will be inside the FemPower group. So if you have not registered for FemPower the course, then you may not see it if you're not in the group. So please just ask for the registration link in the comments if you have not already registered for it. And we will be back tomorrow with module two 
of Fem Power looking at, yeah, I'm pretty sure tomorrow we'll be looking at power versus force inside module two. And go ahead and get the I'm in graphic and share it all over the place and tag me and your name will go in the drawing and we are drawing thousands worth of, of mentorship money tomorrow. So get those out there. Thank you so much for hanging with me this afternoon. I love you ladies.